what we have in front of us is evidence that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jesus, told Pastor David Donovan on August 16, 2015, about the attack in Paris, France. The first thing I want to do, I want to read to you in the middle of the page that you're looking at that the uh, blue uh, printing, large letters mostly, 60, 68 at the top on the right. That's the uh, 6,000th entry into one of these journals. Um, I want to read to you what uh, was written down the night, actually the morning after the dream. I dream I'm in stadium, theater, like Chinese looking, white concrete, lots of Jewish people, lots of money, many high class women. I'm telling Mike Mason what is coming. He does not respond. I see the ceiling is ornate concrete. But when I have the dream, and with that number 6,068, I've been recording in these journals since 1993. And um, so I'm not, this is not my first rodeo doing this. Um, So after I wrote this down, one of my first questions was to the Lord was, why was Mike Mason in the dream? I'd seen him probably 40 years before. We were pretty good friends growing up. Um, and I remembered him being a Christian. So I waited about two days and... I knew I was supposed to contact him and tell him this based upon other things that I know from other things going on in my life with the Lord um, that I couldn't share with him, but I would go ahead and, and share it with him. So if you look next to the handwritten note over to the right of the screen at the top, it says Mike Mason on his Facebook private message. It says, say, brother, I dreamed a couple of nights ago you and I were in a large concrete stadium theater. I looked up at the ceiling. It had kind of Chinese look, but it's white too with concrete design. And I remember middle and upper class, upper middle class Jewish women, and you and I were talking about terrorism. Keep your eyes on Jesus, buddy. Now, the day of the attack when the theater was attacked on the 13th of November I'd gone home that night and the thought that came to me and every once in a while this has over the last 25 years I'll be quickened by the spirit and say Lord you must have told me something about this because I've seen many of these things as part of the calling the Lord has given me. So I went and I sat down and I started going through my journals and I found this entry on August 16th, 2015. And then again, two days later, I send that to Mike. But when I find it, I decide to look up uh, the theater that was attacked. They kept bringing up a theater was attacked. And it said, Bat, Bata Clan, Bata Clan. Cafe, concert, in the Chinese style. Now, this is Wikipedia. 
with a cafe and theater on the ground floor, large dance hall at first floor level. Its original name was Grand Calf Chinos. That's that Chinese uh, Chinese style architecture. Um, and then, so I had that in the dream. I've got I've got this theater. And it says that this theater was built in 18, well, actually it was designed in 1864. Um, it was built in 1864, but it opened February 3rd, 1865. Um, so then I keep, I keep reading down and it says that some of, Buffalo Bill Cody in 1892 performed there. Um, the architect was Charles Duvall, um, and it held vaudeville plays, famous uh, uh, plays and operas and things from over overseas. And again, this thing is built in 18, uh, opened actually in 1865. So I. And, and then it's, if you look at the middle of the Wikipedia page on the left, it talks about in the 70s, it really became big for Prince, Police, Jerry Lee Lewis, uh, the Black Keys, Iron Maiden, uh, Prince, uh, and you name it, uh, for rock. Uh, bands like Dream Theater, Progressive Metal. But right at the bottom of it, it says... Threats for pro-Israeli activities. For 40 years, Bataclan had Jewish owners, Pascal and Joel Lalox, who sold the theater to new owners in September 2015. So, um, 15 to 30 days after my dream, August 16, 15, these Jewish men sold this theater. And in another post that I don't have up here, it says that the Jewish people still retain control of it, which means even though they sold it, they retain control of it, most likely they have a mortgage on it. But it goes on and says, the theater was a target for anti-Zionist activists since the venue often held pro-Israeli events. One extremist group called Army of Islam threatened the Bataclan in 2011 because its owners were Jews. Now, again, you see, we've already, we had theater in what I dreamed that night, and we had Chinese in what I dreamed that night, and now we have Jews in what I dreamed that night. Also, we also have uh, terrorists, because I'm talking about uh, terrorism to Mike and explaining it uh, in uh, in the handwritten note, waking up and putting in my journal, explaining to Mike, telling him what's coming. Now, so we've got uh, several things already. Now let's go on. Pro-Palestinian activists have attacked and protested uh, Bataclan's association with pro-Israeli activities. A video posted on YouTube shows pro-Palestinian militant protesters at the Bataclan in 2008 stating, if the Bataclan and Madal organized, as in previous years, a gala, or Magal, the border police of the Israeli army, people will not take it anymore and you will pay the consequences of your actions. The next time it will Come not with talk. Okay, so so what we have here, um, and somebody brought this up to me today. I had made this video, but I've been wrestling with it in my mind. I needed to remake this. Um, we have um, the theater. We have the Chinese. Uh, we have the Jewish, this isn't handwritten, and uh, we have the terrorists. Now, but also, 
it says at the top, I dreamed I'm in stadium theater. Because I put that comma there, stadium theater. Um, the first thing that happens in the attack is the explosion outside the stadium. So you've got, so far, one, two, three, four, five, six, and now um, it said it, uh, there were galas, and it, it talked about here about uh, upper middle class Jewish women, um, uh, high class women. Uh, these people were putting, these Jewish people were putting on these events to raise money for the border police of the Israeli army. So, and it's been in Jewish hands uh, for 40 years. So when the Lord had me two days later on the 18th send this to Mike, I think when I sent it to him, I mean, I know I know this terrorism is coming to America. I know America is under, under judgments because of other things. And I don't really want to get into that right now. I just really want to kind of stick with the facts of this that the Lord did show me on the 16th that the attack was coming. But when I got to Mike, I had more of an understanding that he needed this. That I needed to be obedient because the Lord had a reason for him to be in there. Well, then if you look down on the bottom of the page on the right, uh, I had decided, well, I need to look up his last name. His name's Mike Mason. It is a status and occupational surname which originally described a skilled stonemason, one who had served his time as an apprentice to a master craftsman. The derivation is from the pre 8th century old French word maison, probably introduced into England by the Norman French after the conquest, 1066. So now we've got like his name, he's, uh, that name is a French name. So I've got this Frenchman I'm sending this to. I've got uh, uh, the theater, the Jewish people, the terrorism, the Chinese. And if you put the stadium in there, because I know when I wrote this, it's like saying, I dreamed I'm in stadium, a uh, theater, you know. So, and if you look right there in the middle on the right, you see the, the uh, theater now with a small uh, restaurant, cafe in there right at the front. But you can still see some of the, the uh, Chinese left to it. The architecture, but if you look over on the left on the Wikipedia on the 1900 postcard of the Vatican, it has a pagoda roof. That at some point parts of it was taken off, but it is as it says here, the building is China, China style. It was Chinese. Uh, styles and architecture being used in the Western world. Now, um, and then listen, if you add another one, if you look at the middle picture on the bottom, there's the terrorism and there's the dead bodies. So there's so much to this that just proves without a doubt on top of, uh, I have 25 years of journals dated locked in safes um, to prove my diligence, due, due diligence to do what the Lord's been telling me through the years to do, because this is all tied together with what it's all started off about. It's this, this is all tied to the last days of mistreatment in Psalms 83 about trying to destroy the Jewish people. And all of these nations, like this last thing we just went through with P5 plus 1, uh, those are the nations, France, Russia, Britain, America, 
China, and the UN signed on the paperwork to give Iran a bomb when Iran has said they're going to bomb and nuke Israel. Well, the Lord has made it clear in the scriptures that that kind of stuff's going to happen in the last days, and they got, but God is going to do something about it. So all of this is just about confirming that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jesus the Lord, he does not sleep. And he has his eye on his people, he has his eye on Israel, and he's speaking to his children everywhere who will listen. So, you know, I often think about the book of Revelation, and I've thought this for years. When you go into the tribulation period, you're looking at it, everything is so, so much destruction. Everything's out of control. But with God, he's so in control, he writes about it beforehand and tells you what it's going to be like and what it's going to be, so you know that which appears to be out of control for the world and for man is completely in God's control, and uh, he's taking care of everything. So let this, let this encourage you that Jesus is God and he's Lord, and the God of the Jew and the Christian is the only God. And uh, he wins. Thank you for listening to this.